Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Bangkok Chili Peppers TV. I am Udain, in this episode I will show you some of the best things to see in a trip of 19 days driving from the south to the northern island to the west coast. Let's go! In this episode I will show you most of the best places and scenic drives in Ireland providing you a lot of useful tips. I will drive from Dublin clockwise, spending the majority of my 19 days on the west coast, driving over the wild Atlantic Way. I will visit the main attractions of County Cork, Kerry, Clare, Galway. Here I will meet the special guest of this episode, John Cobra. Why are you? Come stai? Why are you? Tutto well, bene? Da quando tempo ci vediamo, mamma mia! Together we will show you a lot of typical Irish food, reviewing several restaurants. We will visit an oyster farm and tell you where to find the best oysters in Ireland. Our journey will continue to County Mayo, Sligo, Donegal, reaching the Malinade, the northernmost point in Ireland. We will continue to drive in Northern Ireland for a stop to the giant causeway and then back to Dublin. So be ready and let's go! I just landed in Dublin and first thing to do is to rent a car. I found a good deal with six. I paid around 55 euro per day including full assurance, foreign drive, additional driver and empty retard back. I selected a small car because excluding highways, the roads in Ireland are very tight. My destination is Cork City. With 6 the tolls are charged automatically to my credit card. Keep the left when driving. I just stopped to a very beautiful location on the way to Cork City. Rock of Cashel is probably the most impressive cluster of medieval buildings in Ireland. Some of them date from the 12th to the 13th centuries. It was the traditional seat of the kings of Munster for several hundred years prior to the Norman invasion. It's also believed to be the site where St. Patrick baptized the last pagan king of Munster, Angus, to Christianity. Let's continue to my today's destination, Cork City, 265 km from Dublin. Cork City is the second largest city in Republic of Ireland after Dublin and is located in County Cork. The city centre is an island positioned between two channels of the River Lee. The Cork Harbour is the second largest natural harbour in the world by navigation area after Port Jackson in Sydney. The main points of interest are the City Hall, the McCurtain Street where a lot of Irish pubs are located, the St. Patrick Street, the main artery of the city, great for shopping. From here you can easily reach the Crawford Art Gallery and also the English Market. Built in 1788, it is one of the oldest covered markets in Europe. Here you can find a lot of different food, and there are also restaurants upstairs. In the Shandon, the historical quarter, is located the Church of Saint Anne. Completed in 1726, it is famous for the nice view that you can enjoy from its tower. You can also ring its bells. Today, unfortunately, I cannot enjoy it because of a ceremony preparation. Don't miss this and Finn Bars Cathedral, built in Gothic style and consecrated in 1870, it has inside a beautiful grass labyrinth. The Elizabeth Fort is another point of interest, unfortunately all the attractions close at 5 pm and I am late, but at least the weather is very good today. Cox City is also an important university and the building is very nice. The Fitzgerald's Park is nice for relax, here you can find the beautiful Daly's Bridge. Continue to work to reach the Cork City Jail, before it was a prison and now is a museum. All attractions are closed but no problem, I will enjoy a great pint of Beamish, a very tasty stout beer brewed in Cork City. Oh. On day 2 I will have a day trip to Kinsale an historic port and fishing town located at around 27 km from Cork City. Kinsale is famous for its beautiful landscapes and colourful streets. The major points of interest are the History Museum, the St. Malthus Church, the Desmond Castle. At 2.5 km from the centre is located the amazing Charles Fort. Behind me the Charles Fort, but let me tell you more about this place. Charles Fort is a massive starship and structure of the late 17th century designed by William Robinson. It's very well preserved. It became known as the New Fort to contrast with James Fort, the Old Fort, built on the other side of the Kinsale Harbour. It played an important role during the Willamite War in 1690 and the Irish Civil War in 1922. I strongly recommend you to visit this fortress from inside, it's really amazing. This place is a must-see in my opinion. 
Charles Fort is a stop of the Silly Walk, a beautiful 6 km round walk from Kinsale. At around 19 km from here is located the old head of Kinsale, my next stop. I reached the old head of Kinsale, an absolutely amazing place. This place is associated with a tragic event. On 7th May 1915, the British ship Lusitania was destroyed by a German U-boat. Around 1,200 people died. The wreck of Lusitania lies approximately 18 kilometers off the old head of Kinsale Lighthouse. This place is so beautiful and unfortunately is private-owned. Its access has been restricted to golfers and guests only. There has been a long-running campaign for the restoration of public access organized by the Free the Old Head of Kinsale campaign. A castle has been on the headlane since at least the 3rd century. I will now get back to Cork City, but before I will stop to the Blarney Castle. The Blarney Castle is located in Blarney, close to Cork City, and originally dates from before 1200. A lot of people queue to go on top and kiss the Blarney Stone. A legend says that gives the gift of eloquence. The gardens are so beautiful, there is also a section dedicated to poisonous plants. A quick look to the Bernay house and day two is over for me. A new day started, it's time to leave Cork City and the goal is to reach Kenmar in the evening. On day three I will drive over the Wild Atlantic Way doing several amazing stops before to reach Kenmar. The first one is the Timolig Abbey, located in Timolig. This Franciscan friary was founded in 1240. A quick stop to Incidone Beach, considered one of the most beautiful in Ireland, it's famous for surfing. I will continue to the scenic ship's head drive Road L4704 to reach the lighthouse. Driving on this peninsula is so beautiful. There is a parking on the road before the ship's head lighthouse and a small bar. I reached the ship's head lighthouse, this place looks incredible from above, let me show you why. Looking at this place from a boy, it reminds a ship head. A small lighthouse was built here in 1968. Because of the remoteness of this place and lack of roads at that time, the building materials were transported by helicopter. The Irish Gaelic name for Ireland is Ira. This sign on the stone is one of the 83 such aerial recognition signs built around the Irish coast during the Second World War. Ireland adopted a policy of military neutrality and these signs were toward bombers, they were flying over a neutral country. Today only 25 signs are still present and have a number associated. The ship head is Ira 31. This place is really nice for hiking, I already spent 3 hours here and I am basically alone. Not really alone I would say. Hello? I will get back to the parking area and continue to drive over the Shiphead Peninsula to reach Kemmer. I made a stop to the Fionn McCool seat that offers a spectacular view. Then a short walk in Bantry, a beautiful arbor town in West Cork. I will continue to drive and leave County Cork. My next stop is Kemmer, located in County Kerry. This is the place where I will sleep in day 3. Kemmer is a strategic point to stay, let me tell you why. Kemmer is in a good position that allows to easily reach the main attractions of County Kerry. On day 4 I spent few hours in the morning to explore this little town characterized by small colored buildings and the beautiful Holy Cross Catholic Church consecrated in 1864. Visit the 3000 years old Stone Circle Monument located at 5 minutes walk from the city center. A 30 minutes drive from Kemmer is located the Gleninchy Queen Park. This is a family owned park and farm and a place to not miss if you like hiking. The waterfall with an eye of 685 meters is a really impressive landmark. There are several hiking paths from 40 minutes up to 7 hours. This place is so relaxing, I am basically alone over here. At 5 minutes drive from the park there is the Urag Stone Circle that dates in the early Bronze Age. These sculptures are frequent in County Kerry and Cork. I will now go back and drive the internal part of the scenic drive Ring of Kerry N71 passing through the Ladies View, the Killarney National Park with a stop to the Ross Castle. This castle looks really nice. Built in the 15th century is my last stop in day 4, I will now go back to Kenmer to sleep. Day 5 started and I am leaving Kenmer driving over the scenic drive Ring of Kerry. 
this time clockwise over the N70 road to reach the Derrynan House. It was the home of the Irish politician Daniel O'Connell, known as the Liberator because of his successful campaign for equal rights for all Irish people. This place is the start of the Derrynan Mass Path Loop Hike. This is an easy hike offering a spectacular view over the Derrynan Beach. The loop is 6 km and requires around 1 hour 45 minutes. The Derrin and Blue Flag Beach is one of the most beautiful in Ireland, it's a gem on Ring of Kerry. I will continue my drive over the Ring of Kerry with a stop to the Kuman Kist, considered one of the best places in the world to see starry skies at night. The next stop over this scenic drive is the Balishkelix Beach, known for its close proximity to the Shkelix Islands that appears in the Star Wars movie and its 16th century castle and abbey. Driving here is absolutely amazing, the nature is getting really wild. I will now stop to the Kerry Cliffs. Behind me the cliffs of Kerry, they look absolutely amazing. The wind here is really strong. I will continue to drive over the Ring of Kerry, passing through the mountain stage viewpoint, a place good for hiking. I will now pass the Inch Beach Blue Flag before to reach Dingle, where I will sleep, and my day 5 is over. I reach a Dingle, I will spend 3 nights here. Dingle is a small port town that can be visited in just few hours, famous also for its whiskey distilleries that you can visit. I really like the Dingle whiskey. The Sleehead Drive is one of the most dramatic in Ireland. I will drive clockwise from Dingle, passing Ventry Beach. There are several viewpoints where you can stop. I never experienced the wind so strong in my life. The wind is so strong that my car is shaking. A quick stop to the Dunmore Head, film location for Star Wars. A promontory that offers a spectacular view of the Comienol Beach and the Blasket Island in Ishtoshkert. The wind is insane, too dangerous, better go down. The next interesting point over this lehead marked with the Wild Atlantic sign is the Dune Queen Pier. This place is something to see. This pier appeared in several movies and is located in a stunning scenery surrounded by huge cliffs. In summer months a ferry brings visitors from Dunquin Pier to the Great Blasket Island. I will now go back to Dingle, but before a quick stop to Anascol, the birthplace of the Antarctic explorer and hero Tom Crean. The Anascol Lake is so beautiful and a great place for hiking. As usual the wind is terrible. After spending my second night in Dingle, I decided on day 7 to drive over the scenic drive Connor Pass. It's an easy drive, don't get too scared about what you read on internet. A quick stop to the viewpoint that offers a stunning view over the lakes. I will continue to drive and stop at the Brandon Point, at the foot of Mount Brandon. The view from here is really nice. The Brandon Point offers a panoramic view over Brandon Bay. This is the starting point for hikes over the Mount Brandon. My drive will continue and my last stop for today is the Castle Gregory Beach. Walking on this beach is really relaxing. I will now go back to Dingle where I will finish to spend my day 7 and sleep. On day 8 I will leave County Kerry with a ferry from Tarbert and reach County Clare. This will allow me to save some time. A stop to the Bridges of Ross is a must. The Bridges of Ross is definitely another amazing place. Bridges of Ross were three natural rock bridges. Nowadays there is just one. The others gradually drop uh, to the sea. Tourists love to be photographed standing on the Atlantic Bridge. This place is located on the Loophead Peninsula, County Clare, and is so wild. I will continue to drive over the Loophead Peninsula and reach its edge, the Loophead Lighthouse. This is another place that from above looks amazing. The Loophead Lighthouse is located right on the edge of the Loophead Peninsula. It's 23 meters high and it's possible to have a guided tour and visit it from inside. My next stop is one of the most famous places in Ireland, the Cliffs of Moher. These impressive cliffs run for about 14 kilometers and reach their maximum high of 214 meters. The Cliffs of Moher coastal walk connects the villages of Liscanor and Dulin. A linear route of 20 kilometers, it takes around 4.5 hours to complete. 
There are a lot of people here and tourist buses. My journey in the 8 will keep on and I will reach Dulin, a vibrant village that impressed me for the excellent Irish pubs, live music every day and great food. 160 muscles for me. From the Dulin Pier is possible to reach Via Ferry, the Aran Islands. In Ishimor, with its natural pool, is also one of the locations of the Red Bull Cliff Dive event. A quick visit to the 16th century Dunagor Castle and my day 8 is over. On day 9 I decided to explore the Dulin Cave that contains the famous 7.3 meter hanging stalactite. I am driving through the Buran National Park. The word Buran means rocky place, this amazing location is great for camping and hiking. A quick stop at the Pernabron, this tomb dates back to the Neolithic period. I am in County Galway now, a short visit to the 16th century Dangura Castle. I finally reached my last destination for day 9, Galway City. Unfortunately the part 1 of this episode is over. Subscribe to this channel to watch the part 2 coming soon, I hope that you enjoyed it, bye!